ay ako na i-own lang. Again. So, okay. So good afternoon, everyone. So this is the report of Group One about Activity One, Introduction to Analytical Chemistry. So first, we're going to introduce what is analytical chemistry is all about. Analytical chemistry is the science of obtaining, processing, and communicating information about the composition and structure matter. Next. Nyari. Parang may technical problem ata kay Marumam Salik, ma'am. Ma, okay. okay. Let's wait for a little time. Yung ibang groupmates, please prepare also. Baka magka-problem siya. So baka yung iba pwede mag-screen share. Yes, po, ma'am, nag uh, apa. Wala pa rin. Wait lang ha. Stop share natin. Can someone from the group do the screen sharing instead? Yes po ma'am. Working on it po. Okay. Sige. Thank you.
Okay na. Okay, sige, go. For Dave. Ah, okay pa. So, our objectives for today is first, to illustrate and familiarize the following apparatuses used in analytical chemistry. Second is to identify the uses of the following laboratory apparatuses. And last is to illustrate the periodic table with the chemical symbol, chemical name, atomic number, and atomic weight. <clears throat> uses of the- Hello. So uses of the excuse me, Pam, or the call po. Yes. Hi, uses of the following apparatus. So first is graduated cylinder, used to obtain accurate volume measure measurements. This is commonly Commonly laboratory equipment used by the scientist by the scientists to measure liquids. Graduated cylinder are available are available in three sizes: 500 ml, 1000 ml, and 2000 ml. And from this glass cylinder, I balik balik sa day. Glass cylinders have white scales and are made from borosilicate glass. They also have a solid base and pores. Next day, next. Next pop. Next is desiccator. Used as storage for dried samples, also used to dry an already dried substance indefinitely and not to dry the said substance. Desiccator are syllable include enclosure containing the silicons such as silica gel used for preserving moisture sensitive items such as cobalt paper electronics and chemical that may react to moisture next <clears throat> Syringes. These are used to put liquids into the containers and are used for extracting substances. An antique glass and metal syringe sector in the syringe and needle market include disposable and safety syringes, injection pens, needleless injectors, insulin pumps, and specialty needles. Hypodermic syringes are used with the hypo, hypodermic needles to inject liquids or gases into body tissues or to remove from the body. Next is pipettes used in extracting, transporting, and dispensing liquid substance. A pipe a pipette is laboratory tool commonly used in chemistry, biology, and medicine to transport measured volume of liquid, often as a media dispenser. Pipettes come in a several design for a various purposes with differing levels of accuracy and precision, from single-piece glass pipettes to more complex adjustable or electronic pipettes. Next is ferret used to accurately dispense small amount of liquid or sometimes gas. Ferret also spelled spelled ferret laboratory apparatus used in quantitative chemi chemical analysis to measure the volumes of a liquid or a gas. It consists of a graduated glass tube with a stop cock turning plug or spigot at the one end. Okay. 
volume volumetric flask used for accurate preparation of solution. Volumetric glass is a piece of laboratory glassware that is used to prepare and measure chemical solution. It is used to make up a solution and solution to a known volume. Volumetric flask measure volumes much more precisely than breaker and Ellen Mayer flask. Next. Ellen Mayer flask used to hold liquids and is also used for mixing, heating, cooling, incubation, filtration, storage, and other liquid processing procedure. It is also used to contain liquids and the slanted slides, slides of the Erlen Mayer and the narrow neck allow the contents in the flask to be mixed and stirred without risk of spilling, which is useful for titrating and boiling of liquids. Analytical balance. It is used for precise measurement of mass. Next is laboratory thermometer. It measures temperature with a high level of precision for applications such as experiment monitoring, instrument calibration, materials testing, and maintaining a sterile work environment. Next is centrifuge. It is used for separating particles by density and, for example, is to separate blood cells from serum or plasma, to separate sediment from urine, to measure the volume fraction of erythrocytes in blood, and to separate bound from free components in protein binding and immune procedures. Next, uh, crucible and cover. It, used, it is used to burn solid chemical compounds over a burner. It can hold all kinds of substances, materials, and fluids. Crucible tongue. It is used to hold crucibles and evaporating materials when they are hot. It has many functions in the laboratory. Next. Dust tubes. It is used for storing, mixing, and heating small amounts of chemicals. Beaker. It is used to hold and heat liquids, a very multi-purpose and essential material in the laboratory. <clears throat> Beakers are useful as reaction container or to hold liquid or solid samples. They are also used to catch liquids from filtration and filtrates from filtering operations. Next. Hot plate used for heating substances and liquids in beakers and flasks. Hot plates are frequently used in laboratory to perform chemical reactions to heat samples and for 
numerous other activities. Single pan balances use a references mass or substitute weight to determine the unknown mass of the object being weighed. Next. Weighing bottles used for weighing samples of chemical substances. Weighing bottles are glass laboratory equipment used for precise weighing of solids. Next. Filter paper. It is used to separate fine solid particles from liquids or gases. Filter papers are used with laboratory techniques such as gravity or vacuum filtration. Next. Evaporating dish. Used to cover dissolved solids by evaporation. Evaporating dish is a piece of laboratory glassware used for the evaporation of solutions and super liquids and sometimes to their melting points. Petri dish is used to study microorganisms in laboratories. That's all thing too. So um the periodic table. <clears throat> so this is the periodic table of elements, and we are tasked to have the chemical symbol, chemical name, atomic number, and atomic rate. So um the periodic table of elements are used to have periodic table of elements has elements that is being used in a laboratory. It is a tubular display of the chemical elements. It is widely used in chemistry, physics, and in other sciences and is generally seen as an icon of chemistry. The periodic table elements is an organized list of elements according to their group and series. The periodic table's arrangement also allows science, scientists to discern the trends in element properties, including electron negativity, ionization energy, and atomic radius. So, for the so this is the sample. So. Uh, at the top left side of the of the box per um, chemical element, we have here the atomic number and then the symbol. It is written mostly in a bigger um, bigger font size. And then this is the chemical name, which is hydrogen. And also this is the atomic weight of the element. So. In conclusion, the laboratory apparatuses and periodic table plays a big role in the field of chemistry. Laboratory apparatuses are the tools and equipment used in laboratory. These make the scientific and logical experiments, observation, research, and measurement possible. In this activity, we have learned about different laboratory apparatuses, its uses, and what it looks like. We also learned on what are its benefits and importance in the laboratory because of their unique abilities and different uses of every apparatus used in analytical chemistry. The periodic table of element is an organized list of elements according to their group and series. Learning these things is a great help and brings a lot of advantages in today's world and in the near future. That's all. Thank you. Ay, Hazel, ang assignment. Wait lang.
So good afternoon again, everyone. So this is the answer of group one for the assignment number one about cleaning and marking laboratory wear. So discuss the process of cleaning the laboratory apparatuses. When cleaning the laboratory apparatuses, scrub the curved glassware with warm tap water and soap water brush to avoid strong water stains. Rinse soap with the ionized water. So next question is, why is drying the interior surface of the glassware before use not really necessary? Next slide. I'm going to Wait lang. Because drying glassware before use is rarely necessary. In fact, doing so costs time and can lead to contamination and, and can cause volumetric. and can cause volumetric glassware to alter. So third, number three. Enumerate some chemical substances that can be used in removing grease films in laboratory apparatuses. The best way to get rid of grease is to boil it in a mild sodium carbonate solution. Any fat solvent, such as acetone, can be utilized. Alkalis that are too strong should not be used. Silicon oil is best removed by immersing the stopcock plug or barrel in warm water for two hours. Some chemical substances like sodium carbonate, acetone, fat solvent, and decay Decahydronaphthalene can be used to remove this grease. Next. What is the importance of marking the laboratory wear during an experiment? This is so important for us to know what is the uses and when to utilize that laboratory wear because experimenting might be fun, but also dangerous. And also marking lobware might prevent any disaster. That's all, thank you. Okay, I kindly share first the screen. Let us discuss the apparatus some more. I share a little from the first slide. Yeah, from the first one. Okay, this is just a review. Um, I think lahat ng mga lab, lab din yun the subjects, especially yung mga lower chem line like this, uh, will really start with the laboratory apparatuses in the lab, in the lab class. It's uh, for you to be really acquainted with the names of this lab apparatus or lab apparatuses and also their uses. So, mas marami yung sa Chem 101 actually kesa sa dito sa Chem 102. But I hope um, ngayon, uh, kahit pa hindi pa tayo nag-face to face talaga, you are very familiar na sa kanila. Okay? Wait lang ha, mag-request. Paki grant ng request sino na share Hazel ayan sige para ako na yung mag move ng screen okay so the first that we have here is the graduated cylinder i hope um uh kilala niyo na siya by name and yung kanyang appearance it's a long cylindrical tube with graduation and Ano, ginagamit natin siya in measuring accurate volume of liquids. Okay? So, how do we read the volume? Actually, this is not just for graduated cylinder. This is also true for the other apparatuses that we can use in measuring liquid. Pag, ang tandaan nyo, class, pag um, clear liquid, again, pag clear liquid ang measure natin, you have to read the 
volume sa lower meniscus. Okay? So if this is the tube here, I Okay, if this is the tube, remember, hindi naman talaga mag uh, straight lang yung liquid inside. So parang mag-curve siya inside. And then you have the graduations, di ba? Mga linya-linya dyan. Yung sa curve niya, class, kapag clear ang liquid, dito niyo siya babasahin sa lower meniscus. So please take note of that. Lower meniscus tayo parate. So the lowest part of the curve uh, should be the measurement of the volume of the liquid. But if the liquid is turbid and it's very colored, that's the time you read it sa higher meniscus. Okay? Sa highest part of the curve ng liquid. So again, this is not just for the graduated cylinder. This is also true for the other laboratory apparatuses like sa pipette, sa bure, um, and even with the volumetric flask, you, uh, you read the measurement depending on the characteristic or the property of the liquid. So I hope that is clear. Now, how do I... Uh, okay, here. Now, the next one is the syringes. So, we also use this to put liquid inside. Um, we can also use this for measurement, actually. And then we can extract liquid. We can transfer it to another contain container. So, the syringes that you use sa laboratory for extracting blood is different from the syringes that we use in extracting liquid and transferring it to another container. But anyway, they have the same purpose, extracting liquid and transferring it to another container. Next. Hindi din ako siya makontrol, Hazel. Ikaw na lang, ikaw na lang mag next. Ah, na-skip ito. Desiccator. I think baliktad ang spelling ng desiccator natin. Uh, at, and I think dahil din dun sa ano, worksheet, parang ganyan yung spelling ng desiccator. Ha? Pero for the sake na tama yung spelling ng desiccator natin, i-check talaga natin. It's D-E-S-I-C-C-A-T-O-R. -E -E so, isang S- Dalawang C. That's the spelling of the desiccator. Let me write it sa screen. Desiccator. Okay? That's the correct spelling. Double C. Now, uh, what's the use of our desiccator in the laboratory? We use this to dry our samples class. Again, we use this to dry our samples. Now, yung desiccator natin sa laboratory really looks like that, your picture in the, on the screen. Pero sa ilalim, itong may butas-butas dito, sa ilalim niya, nilalagyan natin yan ng silica beads. Pwede ding silica or silica gel. Okay? Uh, again, pwede siya tawagin silica lang or silica beads or silica gel. I believe you know that when you buy bag or you buy kanyang shoes, Diba inside the shoes meron parang puti na sa inside may mga bilog-bilog, may nakalagay do not eat. That is also actually a silica beads or silica gel. The purpose of that is to uh, absorb moisture para hindi mag-moist ang any product. But for our laboratory experiments, if we want to dry our sample, then we can place it inside a desiccator and it will, it will speed up actually the drying process of our substance. Okay? Uh, we can also place hygroscopic materials here. When you say hygroscopic, lagay natin sa screen. When you say hygroscopic, um, chemicals, ito yung chemicals that has the that have the ability to absorb moisture in the air. So just like sodium hydroxide, the, the solid sodium hydroxide, when you place that in a container without a closure, and then you just let it stay or let it stand in a table for, for a period of time, um, after after a period of time, class, you will really see na magbasa na siya ang solid na sodium hydroxide. So the reason for that is 
that sodium hydroxide is hygroscopic. It will absorb whatever moisture we have in the air. So if we want to keep it really dry, we can place it inside the desiccator with a silica gel or silica beads. Okay? That's the purpose of our desiccator. Sige, pa next ako. We're done with this. Let's keep pala ito. And then we have the pipette. Though we have different types of pipette in the laboratory, but they have the same function. We use them to extract liquid. Uh, we can even measure exact volume if it is properly graduated. And at the same time, transfer it to another container. Okay, that's the use of pipette. We have the so-called, uh, we also have the so-called micro pipette where we can measure very small amounts of liquid. So, kaya siya tinawag na micro pipette. Okay, next. And then the burette or the bure um, is the same thing. We can measure accurate volume of liquids here. It's a very long tube, very uh, longer than that of the graduated cylinder. And you will uh, really see them na medyo mahaba. And then sa baba, you have the presence of this one, the cork. So you can open or close that when you are going to dispense the liquid. So it is also graduated, ha? that is the reason why it can be used in measuring accurate volumes of liquid. By the way, do not ever use graduate, uh, sorry, do not ever use Erlenmeyer flask and beaker also in measuring volumes of liquids though, although they have the graduation, but the graduations there are not accurate. Okay, so meron na tayo graduated cylinder, the pipette, and then the burette. Next. And also, we can actually use volumetric flask. However, the, the unique characteristic of volumetric flask is isang graduation lang ito. Hindi kagaya ng ibang pang measure natin ng liquid. Siya isa lang. So makikita yan siya dito sa neck niya. Isang graduation lang siya. So pag nakalagay like this one, 250 ml, this certain volumetric flask can contain up to 250 ml. Pag umabot dyan yung liquid mo, automatic 250 na yan siya. Okay? So most likely, ginagamit natin to in preparing solutions. We will place the solute there and add enough volume of liquid to complete the required volume. So kung 250, gamit ka lang ng 250 ml na volumetric flask. Meron din tayong, in, in the laboratory, meron din tayong mga 1,000 ml. Uh, depende kung ano yung kailangan natin. Meron din tayong mas maliit pa, like 50 ml. Okay? Next. Okay, this is Erlenmeyer flask. So uh, we just use this for storing our chemical substances. Uh, we also use this for heating if we want to heat or to boil something because the Erlenmeyer flask can withstand heat. We can do uh, some other reactions here, but we can never use this for measuring liquid. Okay, so holding lang ito, mixing, heating, and storing our chemicals, but not... Uh, with the measuring of the liquid, though it has graduation. But these are not accurate measurements. Okay, next. It's uh, Erlenmeyer is letter E. Lahat yun letter E, ha? And then we have the analytical balance. We will have more of this in the activity number two. But please take note that this is a very sensitive balance that we really have to close all the doors of the chamber because um, even air can cause variation in the displayed weight of the material that is being uh, measured. Okay, next. Anyway, we'll have that later. And then laboratory thermometer, this is, this is different from the body, body thermometer ha, na ginagamit natin um, if we want to measure the body temperature. This time, the laboratory thermometer, uh, most of this is still made up of mercury uh, and it can measure very high 
a high temperature class, even more than 100 degrees Celsius. So there are procedures in the laboratory that requires a measurement of the temperature, or there are procedures in the laboratory that would require us to maintain certain temperature level and that we need to place the thermometer inside just to make sure na hindi siya tataas or hindi bababa yung temp. So, hindi yan siya mababasag. It can withstand um, very high temp. Okay, next. And then we have the centrifuge. I believe you are very familiar with this. This uses a rotor inside. You will be placing your sample in small test tubes and you will be placing the test tubes here in every hole. Uh, we use the centrifuge uh, most likely for separation. We can separate liquid and liquid, solid and liquid. We can even separate gas and liquid. So again, you will place the test tube inside and then um, it will be rotated for a certain period of time and meron siyang certain uh, speed also. And then afterwards, once it stopped rotating, you will get the test tube and you will see that there is a separation between the components of the mixture. Okay, next. And then we have the crucible and cover. Um, this is used for heating, most likely for heating. This is um, a laboratory apparatus that can also withstand heat. So it, you can place it directly to the flame of the Bunsen burner, or you can even place this inside an oven. If we want to heat something, something with a certain uh, range of temperature, we can always use the crucible and cover. We'll just place the sample inside. Okay, next. And then we have the crucible tongue. Always remember that we don't use our bare hands to carry laboratory apparatuses that were that are subjected to heating. So we always use crucible and cover, even, ano, even during weighing, even though the apparatus is not really hot, we don't use our bare hands to uh, carry this apparatus because our hands can, uh, have oils that can add up to the weight of the material if we are like weighing or aside from the oils, we, we don't know what is in our hands that will again cause variation to our measurement. So we always use crucible tong to hold our materials, our laboratory apparatuses. Okay, next. And then we have the test tubes. I believe you are very familiar with this. Most of our... Um, Experimental procedures, especially during chemical reactions, are done using the test tubes. Okay, You can use this for mixing or even storing our chemicals. You can even heat our chemicals using the test tubes. So we have different sizes of test tubes in the laboratory, depending on the amount of material that we are going to place inside. Next. And then we have the beaker. They have actually the same use with that of the Erlenmeyer flask. You can use this for storing your chemical substances. You can also use this for heating, but you can never use this in measuring liquids. Then just like the Erlenmeyer flask, it has a graduation, but these are not accurate. Okay, so again, I hope I will not see someone that uses, uh, who will use the beaker and the Erlenmeyer flask in measuring liquids as a node. Next, we have the hot plate also. Um, if we don't want to use the Bunsen burner, because direct flame no pag Bunsen burner, we can use, we can always use the hot plate. We have a lot of this in the laboratory. Actually, we seldom use the Bunsen burner during heating. Most of our heating uh, will be done using the hot plate na. Okay, next. And the single pan balance, this one is an old um, apparatus used in measuring mass of our substance. Um, nowadays, we don't really use this that much, but we have a lot of this in the laboratory. Most of the time, kasi we use the top loader, top loading balance, or 
the analytical balance in weighing. Next. And then we have the weighing battles. I don't know. I just I, I just observe the students when they weigh, they just make a paper box, like like paper formed into a box, and then they place their the chemical substance and weigh it. Actually, most of the times uh, there will be a reaction between the paper and and the chemical. So I hope um by the time that we are going to have a face-to-face -face laboratory class, we will not be using paper um, in measuring the mass of our substance. We can use the weighing bottles. If the weighing bottles are not available, we can actually use other, other laboratory apparatuses like the small beaker, or we can use the evaporating dish or the or even the watch glass in measuring but do not ever place the sample directly to the pan of the analytical balance <laughs> next and then we have the filter paper from the name itself this is used for filtering uh, substances if we want to separate components of mixtures especially solid and so solid and liquid. Most of the time, it's between solid and liquid. So you will have actually an, uh, a separate experiment in using the filter paper, and you will be doing an exercise how to fold this one. So we have proper folding of the filter paper when we place that inside a funnel during the filtration process. Next. And then we have the evaporating dish from the name itself. I believe you you are very familiar with this. Everything that we want to evaporate will place here. And then we will just place the whole evaporating dish with the sample on top of the Bunsen burner. Or even uh, we can use the hot plate for this as long as our purpose is uh, to evaporate our sample. Next. And then the Petri dish, take note of the Petri dish because uh, you will be using this most of the time, especially in your microbio. Um, this one is a glassware with a fitted lid. And this is used for cell culture for uh, an um, microorganism na culture. We place the agar there and this is where we grow uh, microorganisms, bacteria, fungi, and all the other microorganisms na merong suitable agar na nakalagay inside the Petri dish. Okay? Next. Okay. And the periodic table. Um, sa periodic table, please, um, what do you call that? Review the periodic table um, according to number one, syempre, the names of the elements and their symbols. Uh, I hope by now uh, you will you are familiar. Now, actually, this one is an old version because you can still see the UUT, UUP, UUS, and UUO. Uh, if you can look for the modern, the recent version of the periodic table, we already have um specific elements here sa bottom and aside from the name and the symbol i would like to ask you to be familiar with the atomic weights not not with not about the all ano, about all of the elements in the predictable but the atomic weights of the most common ones so ano yung most common ones ito hydrogen uh, you can always see this sa mga reactions, even lithium, sodium, potassium. And then sa group 2, you have the magnesium, calcium, strontium, and barium. I hope you will familiarize that. And aluminum also is a very common one. Uh, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and the whole halogen. You may also include phosphorus and sulfur. Again, be familiar with their atomic weights. Because uh, Anakem will be mostly problem solving and the problem solving involves the use of the atomic weights of these elements. So for the transition metals, most of the time you will encounter manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, and zinc. Or we will also always encounter this one, silver, cadmium, 
uh, gold and mercury. So those are the most common elements na you need to be familiar sa kanilang atomic weights. Not really with the atomic numbers, but their atomic weights. And another thing that you have to know by heart is whether they are metal, non-metal, or semi-metal. So everything here, aluminum, ito, ito na part na ito, I hope I can draw. Okay, let's draw. Itong part na ito, uh, kasali itong sa baba, papunta doon, except kay hydrogen, they are all metals. The green ones here, these are the semi-metals or we call them metalloids and all elements on the right side of the metalloids including hydrogen are our non-metals. Okay? So please have a review about that. And also the names of their groups like group 1 is called alkali metals. Group 2 are the alkaline earth metals. Group 3A boron group, ito carbon group, nit nitrogen group. The oxygen is the chalcogens. Again, they, we, call, we call them chalcogens. And then uh, for the group 7A, we call them halogens. And then lastly, uh, lastly, we have the group 8A, the noble gases. Itong nasa gitna, we call them transition metals. And ang nasa baba, they are called the rare earth metals. We have the lanthanide and the actinide series for the rare earth metals. Okay, so have a review about that. Next. As, uh, okay na ito. Okay na din yung conclusion. Assignment na lang. Sa assignment. Wait lang po mo. Okay. Okay, next. Sige. Uh, the assignment is actually about cleaning and... Pabalik. Pabalik. Pabalik sa... Ayan, cleaning and marking the laboratory wear. So let's have question number one. So number one, discuss the process of cleaning the laboratory apparatuses. Anong patingin ng answer nyo? Okay. Sige, in cleaning our laboratory apparatuses, uh, most of the time, we use water. Um, actually, most likely the distilled water so that it will have no reactions with the other chemicals when we use them for laboratory procedures. <laughs> and then, <laughs> sugar, no? and then, <laughs> and then, wala ko nakabantay kagayin na ito nag-historian ako na nanakita na ko siya. Okay, and then uh, most of the time we use soap when we wash them. But we really have to clean them thoroughly ha, if we wash them with soap. Para walang maiwan na residue. And malalaman talaga natin yan pag may naiwan na residue. Kaya after drying, magkuti-kuti ang atuang glasswares. Okay, uh, and... um. The ideal one is to use a lukewarm water. Not, not really yung mainit masyado na water, pero yung medyo warm lang. Okay? Next. Next, why is drying the interior surface of the glassware before use not really necessary? Sige. Let me see. <laughs> okay, during the drying... Uh, most of our laboratory apparatus kasi have narrow neck and very narrow opening. And it will be very difficult for us to clean the inside. Okay? So most of the time, after washing, we just let it stay. Magda-dry lang yan siya. Yung iba nilalagay nila sa oven. Pero most of the time, if we will not really use them imme immediately, pinapastay lang, magda-dry lang yun siya. Kung ipipilit kasi natin siya ng dry, um, 
napapansin ko, ko to sa mga students, they are going to use, uh, they are using tissues, and then since mahirapan silang ipasok yung tissue sa loob, they will use, uh, ano nila gamit nila? Steering rod para maabot ng tissues ang inside. However, um, merong mga parts ng, ng tissues na maiiwan inside. So that will be now a cause of contamination. So if we are going to use the glassware sa sunod, meron na siyang mga tissues na naiwan doon, particles, magkakaroon na ng contamination. So tama na cleaning or drying the inside of the glasswares are not uh, are not really necessary. Okay? Next Okay, enumerate some chemical substances that can be used in removing grease films in laboratory apparatuses. Actually, we have we have a lot for this. Okay, depende sa, sa ginagamit natin na nag-cause ng grease no, sa ating laboratory apparatus. If kaya pa siya ng soap, Kasi soap naman is merong polar and non-polar na sides. So kung kaya ng soap, then that is good. But if if it cannot really be removed using soap, then we can use chemicals like our acetone. Our basic substances, yung mga, when you say basic, mga alkali, alkaline substances natin, um, hindi, ang tawag dyan? hindi talaga necessary gamitin yung mga strong ones like yung mga sodium hydroxide. Very strong na yun for our laboratory wares. So, we, we can use the alkaline ones pero yung mga hindi masyadong strong na. And then, aside from that, um, what else? Minsan gumagamit sila ng hydrochloric acid to remove the stain. Pero not really the, the very concentrated one. Just like the alkaline, it can, it can be very strong also for our glasswares. And it can also be very strong for us na ma-expose tayo. So, pwede gamitin yung... Well, let's see. Ah, yeah, the, the mild sodium carbonate. This one is an example of a weak, weak alkali. So, hindi natin ginagamit yung strong ones like the sodium hydroxide. Okay. Silicon oil. Oh, okay. I have not used the silicon oil though in cleaning. But this one is your, ano no, result of your research. Sa, sa laboratory, you have not used this one in removing the stuff cup. Oh, okay. This is for the stop cock. Okay. Not, not really for the grease. Okay. Sige go. Next. Si <laughs> Teyong, what is the importance of marking the laboratory wear during an experiment? So simply to avoid mix-ups. Papa next. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, marking our glasswares will avoid mix-ups class and that will avoid errors in the laboratory. As there are chemicals that should not be mixed together because they might cause um, reaction like explosion. Naglisod na sa laboratory na explosion. And that is also to prevent other types of harms or risk inside the laboratory. And at the same time, for us to have the correct result of the experiment. Tamang at ang dipaghalo kasi they are properly labeled. So actually, when we will have our face-to-face -face laboratory class, um, it's actually a requirement for the group to have their own like uh, pencil pen, yung para sa pagmark and yung anong tawag diyan tape yung paper tape ba yan paper tape tape kung saan sinusulat yung label and dinidikit na lang 
sa laboratory apparatus. Okay? Sige, meron pa ba? Or ito na yung last? Last na ito, no? Wala na po, ma'am. Okay, so that's it for activity number one. Any question? Or clarifications?